Hey, what is going on guys? Talk Norris City here, back for another paper watch video. I hope you guys are doing really well. I've picked up the EDP, it is the 1st of December. Of course, you're watching this probably on the 1st of December. Um, and we've got a few stories, so let's get straight into it. So the first story is, of course, the fantastic result for the Norwich City under 21s. They beat Southampton 7. Yes, that is 7 two at Carrow Road last night with Jamar Loza scoring loads of goals. He got five, uh, Cameron King got two, uh, and then what was an emphatic performance from the Norwich City youth side. They did have four um, overage players in it. They had Kyle Lafferty, Russell Martin, Vadis Adigiafo, and Jake Keane. Uh, all of them senior players didn't look too bad. Jake Keane didn't look great. Um, Russell Martin was probably at fault for Southampton's first goal, although it was an exquisite finish. Um, and Vadis Adigirafo looked fantastic in the middle of the park, as he has done for a few games now. But Jamal Lowe's are really starting to come into form now. He's got a couple of goals um, in the previous few games, and now he's bagged five in one game. I've never seen that before. But Jamal Lowe's is a player who I can remember a few seasons back, like under the Paul Lambert sort of era when he was in like the under 18s Jamal Loza was scoring tons and tons of goals and I think his development has sort of been stunted a bit um, since then he hasn't scored as many goals he's been sort of put on unsuccessful loan spells and it's really good to be, to be seeing Jamal Loza scoring goals now admittedly it is against Southampton under 21s he's not ready for the Premier League yet but if he continues with this development give him a couple of seasons and he might be a striker for us um, Dimitri Halaiko our under, uh, under 21 manager said I think the finishing was very enjoyable and we were very clinical in front of goal uh, I thought there were some outstanding goals out there but sometimes when you've got young players on the pitch you do get games like that where the momentum is swinging uh, and goals go in in quick succession it was an unbelievable game we scored something like four goals in 11 minutes in the first half and then like three goals in eight minutes in the second half it was something crazy like that so Norris City under 21s and Jamal Loza well done the next article we see is a Q&A from Paddy Dabber and Michael Bailey, of course, uh, some fantastic writers at the EDP. People sent in their questions, Michael and Paddy answered them. Uh, so the first question they got asked was, would you, would you agree that uh, Graben up front on his own is one of the best strikers we've got who, pl who can play that role? Um, Paddy Davitt says um, he is probably one of the best strikers in that role, but how he continues is completely down to him. I agree with Paddy. I think Lewis Graben is obviously a gifted player. He scored goals wherever he's gone, but it is his attitude that sometimes let him down. We saw the stupid headbutt at Rotherham last season, or was it a punch or something where he got sent off? Uh, pretty much made, uh, meant we couldn't go on to win that game. And we also saw him walk out of the team hotel. So Graben obviously does have a bit of a strange temper, but he got his goal against Arsenal. Uh, and it seems he, he's, he's back to his best. So that's good to see. I would agree with Paddy Davitt. I think Graben has got um, traits that Norwich City do need, like his movement, his, his ability to run down the channels and his ability to pull defenders away from uh, their positions is certainly something that he can do. And also retain the ball as well. He's probably got the best touch out of all of our strikers. Um, Another question coming in here is, is a question that I was sort of picking up on, um, talking about Graben's lack of celebration. And he's never really celebrated as a footballer. I genuinely can't remember in like the 20-odd goals he scored for Norwich City, him celebrating one. He's very subdued. He's a very sort of calm character, it seems. Um, and he's never really celebrated. So that is, isn't something I'd really pick up on. Michael Bailey and, and Paddy Davitt both come back with, they don't really care that he doesn't celebrate as long as he's putting in the effort. Um, while he's playing, that's cool. Uh, and Michael Bailey also said, uh, it was subdued, but I think he was more in the frame of mind um, to say, look, that's what I can do, rather than, um, whoa, look, look at me sort of thing. I agree with both of them there. The celebration isn't much of an issue for me. Finally, the last question uh, in this Q&A that I've sort of picked up on was uh, someone sent in a message talking about the Ruddy and Rudd debate. Once again, John Ruddy having a bit of a flappy performance at the weekend. Michael Bailey coming back and saying, Sunday brought it all back to the discussion table. John needs to rediscover his confidence and judgment, which doesn't sound easy. But having spoke to him pre-match, he'll be determined to find a way. Um, yeah, of course, John Ruddy's form has been patchy this season. He himself described it as patchy. And he really does need to pick up that form quickly. Otherwise, once again, that Declan Rudd in uh, argument will be coming back. Uh, and a lot of people saying we might even need to strengthen in the January transfer market and pick up 
another uh, goalkeeper. I always like reading what the fans have to say. This week's fan zone in the EDP is with a guy called Lee Payne. Um, and he's basically talking about what an absolute boss Alex Neal is. Um, I agree. Like anything about Alex Neal, I normally agree with as long as it's complimentary. He's talking about how Alex Neal's ability to change and learn off things is probably one of the best out there. Uh, Lee Payne says, it talks about last season's 1-0 defeat to Middlesbrough. Alex Neal learnt off that, completely walked them off the park at Wembley. Uh, he put, Alex Neal has not only admitted that he has had to change his style to give the Canaries a chance of staying in the Premier League, but he has been rewarded by doing so. Completely agree. He then compares him um, to Bournemouth's manager, Eddie Howe. And Eddie Howe sort of stuck with his guns of the way he plays. And I think... That's admirable for most managers, but at the end of the day, this is a results business. You need results. As long as we are playing attractive football on occasions, I'm not too fussed if Alex Neal does want to um, sacrifice the way he plays in order to pick up points. He's done it against Swansea. He's done it against Arsenal. Um, Alex Neal, I am absolutely in love with him. I think he's a fantastic manager. Uh, full faith in him. Even when Lewis Graben was in the starting lineup, Lewis Graben isn't my favourite player. He's not many people's favourite player, but if he can do a job in Norwich City, then he's got my full support. Uh, and Alex Neal throwing him in there was genius in the end. It worked. And for that reason, Alex Neal once again gets my confidence as always. So that is this week's EDP rundown. A few great articles. Uh, and also there was an article from Chris Gorham in here about basically Ryan Bennett's push and Alexis Sanchez, which got pushed way over the edge on social media, as it always does. Uh, and that man, Piers Morgan, of course, got involved. But yeah, some really interesting stuff in the EDP this week. Let me know what you think on Jamal Oza, on John Ruddy, on Lewis Graben, on Martin and Whitaker, on all of them people, and also Alex Neal's ability to change things up. Thanks for watching this episode of Paper Watch. Hit subscribe um, if you've enjoyed the video. Leave a like and leave a comment on all of the points raised today. Thanks for watching. Peace out.